Hey guys, Christy here from The Stamp Cycle and welcome to another video for my YouTube channel and blog. Hopefully my voice doesn't sound too bad today. I've been sick for the past couple weeks, so I hope to get through this voiceover without uh, getting into a coughing fit. But So today's card, we're going to be using the beautiful detailed dragonfly finlets, some of the gorgeous glimmer paper that you could get free with Celebration. And then also I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool watercolor striped background. It's super easy, but it gives you a really a beautiful background. So I've got the detailed dragonfly finlets. This is in the Stampin' Up! 2017 Occasion Catalog. And we're going to be using the um, smaller detailed dragonfly and then the outline image as well. Now, since I've made this video, unfortunately, this beautiful, beautiful glimmer paper that you see here on the screen has sold out. So you could... Um, so you could have gotten this glimmer paper free during celebration, which runs from the beginning of January to the end of March. This was an additional item that was added at the beginning of March. This paper is absolutely gorgeous. I am so glad I got to snag me a pack before it sold out. But Stampin' Up! does have some beautiful other color glimmer paper that they always have in the annual catalog. So if you um, want some glimmer paper, you should check out the beautiful colors that they have in the annual catalog. So you see I cut the detail dragonfly there out of that um, pink color and then I cut the outline out of some vellum. So now I've got a piece of watercolor paper. This is uh, four, and a half, four and a fourth by five and a half. And I'm going to use the grid lines here on my craft mat to place this. Um, this is just painter's tape that I got from Lowe's Home Improvement. And I'm going to use the grid there to come down every two squares and lay a piece of tape. So this is um, really marking off the areas where I'm going to be watercoloring my stripes. And this, this masking, this is like painter's tape. Um, it does a really good job masking off areas. Um, you do want to make sure that you push it down um, nice and nice, you know, nicely, firmly down onto your watercolor paper so that when we're painting these stripes, um, none of the water seeps underneath these pieces of, um, pieces of tape here. So I've put this piece of watercolor paper onto just a square of a craft mat. And now I've got um, my re-inkers. So Stampin' Up! re-inkers are fantastic to use for watercoloring. And I just have this really cheap palette tray here. And I just drop um, just one or two drops of the re-inker into one of these little circular wells. And that provides a, a fantastic um, place to mix up um, some watercolors using my re-inkers. So first what I do is I just um, wet all of the areas that I'm going to be watercoloring with just clean, clear water because you want to make sure that um, to get a really nice, even apply of color, excuse me there, you want to make sure all of these areas are wet. We're going to be doing the wet on wet technique for watercoloring. And then I'm just adding some water drips into the um, those that re-inker and then also adding a little bit in the well next to it because I don't want to take the color directly from um, where I put the, the re-inker drops because that's going to be super intense color and I want to slowly build up the color by applying layer after layer after layer of this watercolor. So what I do is I dip my paintbrush into the well where I have the stronger um, the stronger concentration of color from the reinker. Then I pull it into that second well where I just have some, some water and really kind of thin that color out. And then I just keep applying this layer after layer after layer until I get to the intensity of color that I'm looking for for my project. So once I get all of my stripes painted, I'm going to take that dragonfly that we cut out of vellum and I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to paint the back of this dragonfly with that same blue um, watercolor there. And you can paint on vellum. You just have to remember that it takes a long time to dry. So I'm just going to set this dragonfly down, the wet side down, onto a paper towel. And I'm just going to put a clear acrylic block on it to hopefully have it dry flatter. Because when you do watercolor vellum, it curls quite a bit. So I'm hoping this will help flatten it out. 
And so now that I've got all of my stripes to the color that I want, I'm going to heat set this with my heat tool. You want to make sure that your paper is dry before you try to take off this painter's tape. If you don't get it dry and you try to remove the painter's tape, it will tear your paper. And then also when you remove painter's tape, you want to pull it at an angle. So you just grab the end and pull it at an angle towards you. And this will also help from tearing the paper. Um, this, this is supposed to be not really tacky tape, but if you don't make sure your paper's dry and you don't pull it at an angle, it will tear your paper. And so now you get this beautiful watercolor stripe background. It's super easy, but it's a I just love the way this looks. I'm setting a block on there. Watercolor paper, as you know, kind of warps, and I'm hoping this block will, will just straighten it out here. I'm going to take that same piece of vellum, and I'm going to use my sti stitched shapes framelits the, and cut out the largest circle. Say that three or four times. So now that I've got my circle, my vellum circle cut out, I'm just going to start assembling this um, focal piece here. I'm going to adhere that glimmer dragonfly onto this um, painted dragonfly vellum with just some some foam adhesive. I'm just going to cut a strip, apply that to the back of the dragonfly, and then adhere that to the watercolor piece. The watercolor piece is pretty subtle um, behind this, this glimmer paper, but <clears throat> I like the look of the colored vellum as opposed to just um, clear vellum behind behind this this glimmer dragonfly so now i'm just going to take a um just a glue dot put that on the back and then i've got some gold thread and i'm just going to um i'm not going to bore you with showing you <laughs> the whole process but what i do is i just put the one end in the um the glue dot and then i just make loops all around pushing the thread into the center um into that glue dot so that it holds all of this kind of mess of thread together in that glue dot. So once I get the thread all situated, I'm going to take another, um, just another dimensional, put that on the back of the dragonfly, and then I'm going to adhere that to this vellum circle. I did adhere the dragon um, in the middle, the dragonfly in the middle, and kind of up towards the top because I knew I wanted to add um, a small sentiment to the bottom right hand corner and so there you go is the beginnings of the focal point here it's really pretty so I also white heat embossed this hello sentiment um, this hello sentiment is from the thoughtful banner stamp set and I just stamped that on a piece of dapper denim and Versamark ink added white embossing powder and then heat set it and then I'm going to pop this up onto um, my focal point here with another piece of um, that foam dimensional. So now I'm just going to start assembling my card. I've got some Tombow multi-purpose glue. I'm going to adhere this um, watercolor stripe background to a piece of sweet sugar plum cardstock. I did cut down the watercolor piece to be four by five and a fourth, and then the sweet sugar come sweet sugar plum oh that's a mouthful piece is just one eighth inch um, larger than the stripe piece and then i'm going to adhere um, this whole panel onto a top folding um, a2 card base made out of the thick whisper white i like to use thick whisper white for my card bases because it gives the card a little bit more weight um, when you use the 80 pound um, whisper white card stock it it kind of makes the card feel a little flimsy. So that's why I like to use the Thick Whisper White for my card bases. And I like to use that Tombow glue because it doesn't adhere immediately. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that you can make sure you get all of your layers perfectly lined um, and you don't have any crooked layers. So I, I really like to use that for adhering all of my card bases together. And now I just need to adhere this focal piece to the front of the card. I wanted a very strong adhesive because I don't want this to come off of the mail. So I'm using some of the uh, Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue. This stuff is so strong. So once this is glued down, it's not going anywhere. So I just put that on the back of this um, dragonfly piece. I put the glue behind the dragonfly and then behind the sentiment because I don't want that glue to show through the vellum in the front. So by doing that here, um, that hides it and you you can't tell that um, there's any glue back there. So once you glue that on, that finishes the card. So this was a 
Super simple card, but I really love how it turned out. That watercolor background was exactly what I was going for when making this card, and I love it. I, I think it's really gorgeous. And that glimmer paper is just, it's its just abs absolutely gorgeous. I'm sorry that it's sold out um, and you can't get any anymore, but um, definitely check out the other glimmer paper that Stampin' Up! has all the time. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any questions, you can hop over to my blog at www.thestampcycle.com. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks. Bye.